In today's video, I'm going to go through all my favorite art supplies. It's going to be the non-paint ones. We did the top eight colors that I really love from 2018 and also recently, which I will link up here. So I thought it'd be good to do a video on all my favorite art supplies beyond paint, although there are some paints in here <laughs> as well. We're going to do this in no particular order. I wrote a list of my favorite art supplies and that's the order we're going to go in. So first up we have the Jackson 28 Well palette and this has been my go-to studio palette for years. I think probably from about 2017 onwards or 2018 onwards. We went through the history of my palette, which I will also leave a link up here, but it's definitely my go-to palette. It's a plastic palette with obviously 28 wells. And I love this because you can write the colors and also what colors neutralize each other. And 28 wells is plenty for me. And it also gives me space to add new colors or just separate some colors so that they don't get too mixed up when you're using the palette. It's durable. It's not like those cheap ones, you know, when you're like, oh, is it going to break if I touch it wrong? This is very sturdy palette. And that's why my last version of this lasted me for years. And it was only through just not having the energy or the patience to take all the colors out to be able to reuse it that I started using a new one this year. And I know this is going to last me for years and it's going to be great. Next up, we have the Black Wing 602 pencil. And this really changed the way I draw or more to the point, this really changed me from disliking drawing to enjoying drawing. The reason why this pencil is so good and I saw it recommended on like an artist video and they were gushing over it. I was like, well, it can't be that good. It's just a pencil. No, this is definitely a very different pencil. This is where I drew or sketched with it first time. And I understood that actually this is the most versatile pencil I've ever had. It goes from a very light shade like here to very dark shade. This is also black wing as well. I would say if you want a scale of what thickness or softness it can achieve, this is something I did with another set of pencils that went from 10B to 10H. So this is a great way to figure out how dark it will go. I would say definitely a 4B like down here. It looks like a 4B and then probably like a 2H. So you get a range of 2H to 4B in one pencil. It means you don't have to swap out your pencils to get different values. It's very easy to control as well. You're definitely in control, not the pencil. Sometimes bad pencils will try to tell you what to do. So if you just want one pencil to draw with, rather than having lots of different softness, then I highly, highly recommend the Black Wing 602 pencil. There's also different softness and versions as well, but the 602 is the standard go-to that I recommend you start off with. And if you find it too hard, then there are softer versions as well. Talking of pencils, I have three more pencils to show you. And these are the Mitsubishi High Uni pencils. And I have three different thickness that I really like. As I showed you earlier, I bought a set of these pencils from 10B all the way to 10H and tested which thickness I liked the most. And the Tembi is almost chocolatey like in texture. And I really like that because it's a way to have chocolatiness in your drawing without getting your fingers dirty. So if that is a thing that you struggle with, I highly recommend the Tembi. And then the 6B is the one I really like how it creates the shadows. I love that texture. So that's what I use a 6B for. And then the 3B is here. And I just really like the lines, the awkwardness of the lines that it can create with it. So I mostly use 6B and 3B, and then I will use the 10B if I want like a chocolatey kind of look. On to drawing pens and my favorite, and I tested all the pigment microns and I love the U2 size best. And um, let's go through 
this was me testing out all the pens. <laughs> I went through a phase of going, okay, I need to invest some time into finding the right tools for my drawing. And I found that the Sakura Pigma Micron was the one that gave me the look that I really, really liked. Um, I tried a lot, as you can see tried a lot and then I did a series of drawings with a drawing and a excerpt from Wikipedia of each topic just for fun to get into drawing a bit more. This is my sketchbook by the way where I test lots of different materials uh, but I really like how it draws. You can do really really fine detail texture drawing or you can do really simple drawing and I like the look of you get when you go over the same lines a few times so that's how I like to draw. A lot of fun. So that's the Micron O2. If you're looking at my writing going well that's a different pen that is also true. The handwritten text, I like to use a Fudenosuke by Tombow and this is the soft one or the Shinayaka Shitate and it's a very affordable pen and it is a brush tip pen but a small brush tip pen and I just love how it writes on the pages so I use this exclusively to write handwritten text onto what I've already drawn. My next favourite art supply is a 0.3 mechanical pencil with a HB lead and this doesn't have to be any particular brand. This is just the brand that I bought but I think it can be any brand. It's just the 0.3 millimeter lead that in the HB hardness that has worked for me. And I use this for when I'm making charts for videos because these don't draw as thick a line or a darker line as a 0.5 millimeter lead will do in the same hardness. So I have started using this a lot. It allows me to draw a very fine but subtle lines so it doesn't really get in the way of the look of the chart as much. Of course if you are drawing with a pencil you need an eraser and this is the Fabio Castell Dust Free 187120 eraser and this was a recommendation from Denise from In Liquid Colour. Hi Denise, I will leave her channel up here. If you're here you already know Denise right? You probably came from her channel and in which case thank you for coming over and Denise also thank you for sharing my channel. She recommended this, this in one of her videos and I tried it and I'm a convert and I even messaged her going oh my god this eraser is amazing. I thought all erasers were the same, no they're not, this is the best one that I've ever tried. Next thing I like is the Hybrid Gel Grip by Pento in the white. I use this a lot in my paintings. You can see it here, it creates thin and quite opaque white lines. This pen will go on quite transparent but as it dries it will become more opaque and stand out more like this and I just find this really easy to use. It produces the lines I want, the texture I want and the opaqueness I want. I didn't want a pure solid one. If you want to look at ways of adding highlights I will leave a link up here of a video where I tested loads of different ways of adding white highlight so you can pick the, your favourite white highlights but this is my favourite one. Let's look at brushes. I have three favourite brushes. I have the Prodin Pro Art Plus in size 10. I'm sure you guys heard me talk about this brush. This is my go-to brush. It's a workhorse brush. I've made a video about all three of these so I'm gonna link a playlist of all my brush reviews so that you can check them out. What can I say? It's my go-to. It's a workhorse. I love it. It's not a particularly wet brush but it's it can take a beat and one of these will last me a whole year and you guys know I paint a lot and swatch a lot of paints for you guys and even after a year it's fine it's just that I'm like oh the tip's slightly bent now that kind of thing so I will swap it out for another new brush but yeah it's a workhorse in normal years it will last you years. In the middle we have the Princeton Heritage in the round which you guys know I love it's the 4050R 
This is size 8. I also love the size 10. If you've seen this video, you guys know that this is hard to get hold of in the UK. And yes, you can get them imported from the US, but then that is very expensive, both in postage as well as the import duty. And that's why I've not followed your wonderful numerous advice on where to get them in the US. I would love to, but it's still they're prohibitively expensive. So that's why I stick with doing the brush testing series in the hope of finding one that's like this that I can get hold of in the UK. And then we have the Pro Art Connoisseur, which is a new brush to me that came to me through doing the brush reviews. And this is a great versatile moppy, but not all the way mop brush. I find the full mop brushes a little bit hard to use because I'm used to the Pro Lean Pro Art Plus brushes, which are quite dry. It's just too much of a contrast, whereas the Pro Art Connoisseur is like a nice halfway in between when I want a large coverage, but not soaking wet brush. This is a great brush for that. I'm just going to throw in another pen that I like to use, and that is the Uni Procy pen. It's a water-based pen, so it's not waterproof, but I love, love, love sketching with this pen. Doing animal illustration stuff, this is what I use. I love how it draws. When I go to Japan, I buy like a whole pack of these. It's very cheap as well. It's 150 yen, guys. 150 yen for this pen, which is like $1.50. Stationery is so cheap in Japan and it frustrates me that I have not been able to go back to Japan for three whole years. My supplies are getting low and I really need to go back to Japan very soon. Next thing is this thing and you might be like, what on earth is this? This was sent me by Ev from Eve of Bolt, as you guys know, my best friend. This is a tube opener. Let's say you have a tube that won't open, maybe you've not opened it in a while. It's just like the jar openers you find on those handy things, websites and, and TV channels and stuff. It works exactly the same way, but they're just made for smaller things like a tube. So you just put it in and then twist, you can open the lid. And the reason why this is one of my favorite thing is I make lots of dot cards and some of them have 108 different colors. And that means like opening 108 tubes and my fingers get tired. The worst is Sennelier. I hate the tube top of Sennelier and Cassart and Jackson because they all have the same tube lid. Those are evil, especially if you have to open more than one. And these save my finger all the time. This is a tube opener made by Golden. So if you're in America, you'll probably be able to find this either in an art supply shop or if you go straight to Golden. Absolutely amazing tool. Thank you Golden for making this and thank you Ev for sending me one of these. It has saved me so many times. Next one, I'm sorry, these are really old ones and I need to swap them out, but cotton gloves. And I have three pairs. I have two intact pair with all the fingers and then I have one where I cut off the first three fingers halfway up and there's a reason for this. If I'm handling paper, I just use these two gloves with the four fingers and the reason why I use them is to protect the paper because obviously if you get your grease from your hand onto paper that really wrecks the paper in terms of how you can paint over it because watercolor will just bead off that little area. There's nothing you can do about it. So when I'm handling watercolor paper, I'm always wearing cotton gloves to make sure that my very well moisturized because I moisturize my hand a lot. It's a thing that my grandmother taught me and I haven't grown out of it and I have no intention of growing out of it. So my hands are often quite greasy, so I wear the cotton gloves. And then this one, I often wear it with a full one on this side. And this one is if I have to draw a line or anything and dragging my hand across or taping something, then this allows me to hold a pen like that and have good grip because I hate holding pens and stuff with fully gloved finger like this. It just feels weird to me. So it allows me to do that, but also protect the paper from touching my hand down here. Next thing is a pencil sharpener. And when I showed you guys these pencils, you might've wondered how on earth I got it so pointy. And the reason why we want pointy is because it gives you maximum coverage and control when you are drawing with these pencils, but I cannot be bothered to shave it with a knife like a proper artist would. And so I found this pencil sharpener that lets me do that with an ease of a pencil sharpener. And this pencil sharpener is called 
the Asmex Desan pencil sharpener and it allows you to sharpen your lead up to 19 millimeters. So this bit to be 19 millimeters long, depending on the thickness of your pencil, obviously. It's a very unique pencil sharpener. I've looked everywhere for this. I cannot find it anywhere other than on Sekaido's website, which you can use if you use a Google Translate. And also they now, I think, do a deal with a different company that can get things sent off to you abroad, but I've not used it. So I don't know if I can recommend it or not. I'm just mentioning it if you're desperate to get this. I've looked on Amazon, on US, UK, Japan, and they're not available there. But I can tell you, if you ever do go to Japan, you can pick one of these up from Sekaido. So I highly recommend if you get that chance to pick this one up if you want pencil sharpened like very pointy and long like this. Next up is a sketchbook. It's a lotion sketchbook and I have to declare that I love Lotion as a notebook brand anyway. All my notebooks are Lotion. I love working with them. So I was really, really pleased that I liked their sketchbook as well. And these aren't for water media. They don't handle it very well. And you can do things like color as a background before you use it for something else. But I wouldn't particularly recommend it for painting. So this was a sketch page I did when I was trying to plan a Patreon painting and it's okay, but you're not gonna get pieces that you may want to show off to people afterwards. It's a great way to test out your ideas, see if you like it. There's a trend on YouTube to have final pieces, like beautiful finished pieces in sketchbooks and I don't believe in that. I think sketchbooks should be messy, sketchbooks should be for you experimenting and testing and then you can go on to do the final pieces. So that's what I use it for and that's great for that. It's great for dry medias, testing out ideas. Here I'm testing out painting ideas, things like that and I love it. I think I will stick with this, but it is mostly a dry media sketchbook. Next one is a three millimeter masking tapes. And this I get from <laughs> Ev. Ev can find this on Canadian Amazon. And so when I run out, I ask her to send me some more and I send them money and she very kindly sends them over to me. And the three millimeter is absolutely wonderful for making color charts with. This is a great one to just line that chart with so that you know you're not gonna go over it. Because I find painting very precisely to the line very stressful and I hate doing it. So this is a great way to get around that. Next one is these, and I get asked about these a lot whenever I show them. These are what's known as Ezara in Japanese, and they're literally for mixing your paint on, and that's what I use it for. If I need a large amount of paint or anything, I will mix it in here. And these, you can find them on Amazon Japan, and you can also get it from Sekai or any normal art supply shop in Japan, that if you can find them that they can ship abroad, you'll be able to get hold of this. And they're not expensive, but they do break in transit. So I do recommend buying two sets or like more sets than you think you're going to need. You can get like a pack of 10. So if you think you need 10, I recommend you get like another set. So you get 20 so that hopefully, especially if you're going to have it shipped abroad, the best outcome is that none of them breaks. But it'd be sad if you need an exact number and you get it and then some of them are broken. So definitely get more than what you need. Another tool that I absolutely love and saves me a lot of money is a tube squeezer. I have no idea where I got this. So I'm really sorry. But if you just look for tube squeezer on Amazon, you will find one of these. Say this paint tube is almost empty. If you just put it through here, it will squeeze all the paints back up to the top and that will save you a whole bunch of money in the long run. I know this thing, which was cheap, has paid itself over and over. When I think I can't get any more paint out, I can usually get like a dollop or two more out by using this tube squeezer. This is a small piece of a Ikea rug anti-slip mat. This comes in a big roll and this is what you would put on the floor before you put the rug and then your rug doesn't slip. But what I use it for is for my palette 
because I find that it's really annoying when I'm trying to use the palette on my desk and the palette slides. So I just put this under my palette and then it stays very secure. It won't move and it stops annoying me. They're about dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars. I don't know how much they are in the US, but they're very cheap for a big roll. So it, it's definitely worth investing in. And they are also useful for lots of other things. So if sliding palettes annoy you, invest in one of these. And then just quick couple of things. A palette knife that is very hard is useful for when you're pulling out paints out of palettes. Although I have bent this one, probably need a harder one. And then two final items that are about re-wetting paints and things. I have two, I have a pipette. I think this is obvious to what it uses it for. You can squeeze some water in and drop it on your paint. But this is what I use more and this is a hairdresser spray and I'm very particular about it being a hairdresser spray because it has the finest mist and that is useful if you are just wanting to lightly re-wet say a piece of paper or painting. I have a video on how to flatten paper um, that I will link up here as well as re-wetting like say if I just want to re-wet a whole palette then I'll use this because it's a lot quicker than trying to drop a drop of water in every single well that I have in my studio palette. So that is it for my favorite art supplies. I hope it was interesting to you. Do let me know which one was your favorite. Do let me know if you're like oh I want to try that one. I will leave links down below to as many as I can track because some of these I've had for years, some of these aren't available abroad. You have, kind of have to go to Japan to get it, but I will do my best. Links down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a like or subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!